Welcome to the Wedding Filmmaker Spotlight series where I take a look at the best wedding filmmakers in the industry and try to figure out what makes their films so good. In this episode, we're taking a look at Hello Tomorrow. My mother once told me that the ultimate test of love is to ask yourself if the world are ending and it came down to just you and another person in a rowboat headed nowhere, who would that person be? I know so deeply that that person is you. If you're trying to level up your wedding filmmaking skills, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to hit the bell icon to stay notified when new videos come out each week. So what I want to talk about in this video is how to create a ceremony edit, how to plan for one and how to actually execute it. And we're going to be learning from one of the greatest uh, wedding filmmaking companies out there today. We're going to be learning from Hello Tomorrow. So we're just going to go through this shot by shot and figure out all of the steps that they had to take to create this ceremony. So this isn't a full ceremony edit. Keep that in mind. This is just the section of the highlight film which has the ceremony in it. However, it is still shot in a fairly linear fashion, so we should be able to learn from it to create our own full-length ceremonies as well. So what leads us into the ceremony, into the space where the ceremony is going to take place, are these detail shots. They're easing us in with detail shots. They're not just showing us the ceremony. That's not interesting. Right? We want to go into the ceremony slowly. We want to be eased into things. That's something to remember when you're editing anything. Don't just throw people into the action. Ease them into it. So first we see these flowers. Then we see these candles. Beautiful lighting here, backlit by the sun. Then we see the ceremony. So first we're seeing these details. Then we're seeing the space. And we're seeing it empty, which is nice. You can get that shot at the start of the day before everyone shows up. You know, you can take your gimbal out. You can get that shot if you're, you know, if that's what you use your gimbal for. I think that's a really great way to do it. I don't personally like to stay on the gimbal all day. So if I can get my gimbal shots out of the way at the beginning, that makes things a lot easier for me. And it looks great too to see the ceremony space completely empty. Okay, now we're easing them in. We're easing into it even more here. So now we're showing the guests arriving. We're not just, again, we're not just going straight into the ceremony. We're easing the viewer in. So we've got basically a wide of the guests arriving. We've got some close-up shots of people interacting. These are your friends and family, right? Good times. Now they're all in that space, which we've just established. So we know what's happening. We know what's coming. Another shot of the friends and family. They're, they're intrigued. They're having a good time. They can't wait for the ceremony. Then we cut to the bride. Now if we listen to the audio, let's take a listen to the audio and see how they cut that audio with these visuals. So we know the, lit, we know the progression up until we see the bride. Let's see how they edited it with the audio. My mother once told me that the ultimate test of love is to ask yourself if the world are ending and it came down to just you and another person in a rowboat had in So they've brought the audio in before we see the bride. Okay, we bring the audio in just after we see that the guests have arrived. So that's really easing us into it because now it's not just, could you imagine what it would be like if they had waited to bring in that audio until we see the bride. If, if we didn't see the bride until that line, it would be much more jarring and less flowing. It wouldn't, it wouldn't ease us into it at all. So by bringing the audio of one of the speakers, either the bride or the groom or the officiant, into the edit before we see them, we're getting that nice ease in effect. Okay, so we've got the bride, then we switch to a shot of the groom. So in order to get a shot like this, there are, there are different ways you could do this, but the most straightforward way, I would imagine, 
is to set up two cameras, one camera on the bride, one camera on the groom, and try to match those focal lengths so you're not having you know, a wide shot, like a wide field of view for your groom and a, and a tight shot you know, with a long lens for your bride. You wanna have pretty much the same focal length, the same look, the same amount of compression on both of the faces. So I think that's what they've gone and done here. They've got one camera here, one camera here. And it looks like to me, it looks like to, yeah, I would say that this, this angle on the groom looks like it's on a tripod, while this angle looks like it's on a monopod. You can see a little bit more movement in the frame than this one, but maybe, maybe not. They might both be mono pods or tripods, but you want a nice steady shot on both of the, of the people speaking here. Tight shots, so you can get these nice over the shoulder shots. Um, you can see here that there is a, it looks like a portable recorder taped to the microphone. So that would be a redundant audio source. So it's like they've got this feed coming through this uh, SM58 going into the desk, right? Then they're getting that feed, they're recording that onto their uh, recording devices. But then they've also got this audio recorder attached to the microphone just in case something goes wrong. So that's something to keep in mind. And you know, when you watch this and you're not analyzing it like I am now, you don't you don't even notice that that is taped to there. And they've used you know nice black tape. It really blends in quite nicely. So you don't even notice. And the and the audio quality is just so much higher than it is if you you know if you just relied on the groom's lapel mic, for instance. We we see the bride. She's talking to the groom. Then we get a reaction of the groom. Then when she turns to the audience, we see the audience. So we're, it's, not, it's not a complicated edit, you know, she's, we're just, we're showing the audience what they expect to see. Where if she's talking to someone, we expect to see that person. If she's looking at someone else, we expect to see them. And then we cut just to the groom waiting for the bride, and you can see where this is going. The next shot is most likely going to be the bride coming down the aisle. There we go. With the dad, that's such a nice shot. I love whatever this is. I guess it's like a flare. I don't know if that's uh, a natural flare, if that's in post, but that looks really, really nice. So we see him. We're not gonna wonder who that voice is coming from, right? That would be weird. But yeah, we see him. Then we see the bride coming down the aisle. She, he's talking about Samantha. So let's see Samantha. Then we cut to the groom. We're gonna wanna see her reaction at some point, but I guess since he's talking about both of them, it's perfectly fine to cut to some B-roll of the two of them. And what's nice about this little sequence is that they've cut from the groom and his vows to Samantha's vows and to the bride's vows. And what's cool about that is if you had stuck to this kind of exchange where it's, where it's the groom and then it cuts back to the bride, that would have felt more jarring. But because they cut to B-roll, it doesn't feel weird that the groom has suddenly just stopped um, and then the bride has taken over. And it's just a really nice way to mix up the, the feeling of the whole thing. Just cutting to some B-roll. It does make the whole thing just feel more interesting. It's not just those same two angles over and over. But I think the key takeaway from this is, you know, whatever is being said in the film, if you can match what's being said with visuals that, that relate to what's being said, then you're gonna have a nice clean edit. This is like a safety angle. So they have this for when they kiss, for when they're exchanging vows. So that way, if anything, you know, gets messed up, they have this safety angle. So they had that, that was set up the whole time. We just, this is just the first time we're seeing it. So we have our camera guy over here. We've got our camera uh, person on the other side over here, getting these reactions. Then when they go to kiss, someone ran all the way over here to get this wider angle. And then we also just mixed it with this static shot. That's my guess. So I'm thinking that this is a three camera setup, two cameras on monopods, one camera on a, or, or gimbals. Could be two cameras on gimbals, two cameras on monopods. I'm not sure how they're stabilizing. And then one camera on a stabilizer. So three cameras total. 
And I think that's how this was done. So if this is the safety angle, I think this is a really nice way to do it because it's not so wide that it just, you know, like this one, like if this was your, this is the kind of thing that is generally like shot as the safety, but I think this is a lot more uh, pleasing, a lot more interesting. You know, it's still safe enough. You can see the bride, you can see the groom, you can see the officiant, you just can't see everything. But if you have to cut to it, I think this is a lot more pleasing to cut to. And then, yeah, lastly, they, I like this. They cut from this shot. And this is why I think they are rocking a monopod because this is not like floaty, like this shot here where they're coming down the aisle. This isn't a floaty shot. This is more of a handheld, you know, kind of monopod feeling. It's quite a lot of bobbing. Whereas that feel, oh, actually that's in slow motion though. So it's kind of hard to say. But yeah, I really like how they cut from the walking out down the aisle to the walking in to the reception. That's a really nice match cut and just something that I'm totally gonna steal. So that's Hello Tomorrow and that's how I think they shoot a ceremony. I think they use three cameras, one safety, and then two on monopods. Um, leave your comment down below. What do you think they use? Do you think they're using a monopod or do you think they're using a gimbal? It doesn't really matter. The, I, the, I think the main takeaway is that you have to have a safety and it makes it very pretty when you have two of the same uh, kind of focal lengths for those vow exchanges on one on each side so you can get those really nice cuts. Um, in terms of editing, I think, yeah, just to recap, um, try to show what's being said. If you can show what's being said, the whole thing becomes a, not formulaic, but more predictable and just more enjoyable for the viewer. If you like this episode of the Wedding Filmmaker Spotlight series and you wanna see more content like this in the future, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell notification to stay in the loop when new videos come out each week. I'll see you in the next one.